This is episode 255. But Justin, what about the shareholders? <laughs> I want the g- dramatic chipmunk sound. <laughs> bum, bum, uh, bum. Bum. Uh, yeah, so this week we just spend a super, super long time on Slash's new amp. And, and a super, then, super long time on And then a super, UAT. super long time on my music mixing workflow, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> very, very self-indulgent, stuff, th- I felt. There's some stuff in this episode that we hate and some other stuff that we love. So it's a ah, little it's bit a of everything. Much better way of putting it. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit of everything. I like it. Hello, Justin. Hello, Derek. How uh, how is how is you? Um, doing good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's um. Let's see. My kid was has uh, she's done for school for for holidays. Mm-hmm. So today was home and didn't have any plans to do anything with her. So I was just like, I'm at work, kid. Here's all the stuff you can do. She's eight now, so she's mm. pretty good at that. Um, Pretty good at self-sustaining. Like, yeah, playtime. and I mean, yeah. she's sort of bummed. She's like, so maybe you can take like 20 minutes at some point and like play <laughs> with my little dolls with me. And I was like, okay, kid, you know what? Yeah, that sounds I like owe, a fair deal. I owe you at least that much. <clears throat> yeah. um, I did end up blowing off a little early and going to play with her for a while <laughs> instead. But yeah, uh, um, so it's cool. And but it Justin, snowed. what about the shareholders? <laughs> <laughs> God damn it, it's always the shareholders. That's how they get you. <laughs> but what will the board say? <laughs> the board. <laughs> the so board. yeah, you, you got snow? Uh, yeah. And it's, it's it's you know, it's like a dusting. But actually, yeah. they, it, it's it enough came, to be a big deal over there. It came down in these flurries. And like the second one was like insane. Like you couldn't see 10 feet in front of your face. And it was like sideways snow. Um, <laughs> but, but then it, it calmed down into like normal flakes and accumulated, you know, just like a dusting. Um, not really, so you could still see the grass. You know what I mean? Mm, it was like mm-hmm. that much snow. But my kid, my kid was born in mm. Ohio. So she doesn't know that that's not snow. So she was like, yeah! Oh my God! <laughs> yeah. She's like, oh, she's getting her stool. She's getting her snow pants out of the, dish. I gotta put all this stuff on my body! <laughs> <laughs> she takes her sled outside. She's like dragging it around. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> She said she, I was like just inside work and she comes in and she's got this snowball like in her arms, like this giant, she's like, I took a bunch of time and I made this. And I was like, oh my God, why'd you bring it in the house? <laughs> so I had I unsuper- basically unsupervised kid playing in the snow today. Nobody perfect. arrest me. <laughs> That's perfect. So, I yeah. love that. Not fully yeah. unsupervised. I talked to her for about three seconds. Today. <laughs> yeah, that's the other thing. She fucking calls her. I had just come in to like just I hadn't been in in, in like an hour. And so I was like, well, I should just mm. I'm gonna top up my coffee and see what Arya's doing. And I hear someone say, Okay, bye. And yeah. I was like, Who'd you call? You know? <laughs> yeah. So I'm just like, I was in the kitchen, like getting some water or something in between things at work. My phone starts <laughs> ringing and it's like FaceTime call from Aria. I'm like, what? What? <laughs> like it's it's Monday, and it, I forget what time it was, but it was like the middle of the day. Middle of the day, yeah. Yeah, and I pick up, and there's no one there, right? <laughs> it's, just, it's like pointed so at the I, ceiling. It's pointed at the ceiling, and I'm like, hello? And she just like pokes in from the side. She's like, oh, hi. I was like, what's going on? She's like, um, I called you by accident. <laughs> I bumped it. It's like, oh, that's okay. What do you up to? So we just like chatted for a second. <laughs> and she was like, I think she was a little embarrassed, actually. Yeah, but, um, yeah. It was still probably worried fun. that she was going to be in trouble or something. But. No, I was just like, oh, you yeah. home from school for break? And she's like, yeah. And I was like, cool. So what are you doing? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> He's just like classic kid responses. Right? Yep. right, right. It's like, all right, well, I'll see you later. Um, <laughs> have a good. And I was like, okay, bye. It was good to talk to you. And she's like, okay. And I just like kind of kept saying, okay. And yep. Okay. Yeah, you're gonna have to hang up on her. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She actually she ended up hanging up, which is oh, okay, funny. Good. But she was, just, I think, she was like nervous about 
like, okay, bye. Like it wasn't this right. officially sanctioned phone call. And I don't know. It's yeah. So funny. Yeah. All right. So yeah. Oh, that's cute. That's cute. So yeah. Um, well, we did not get snow. We got like approximately 3,000 inches of rain here. Oh, no. That's it a has lot. been raining so hard all day. Yeah. And I had like a really weird day because it was just so dark the whole day. It basically mm. seemed like the sun never came up. It was oh, wow. that gloomy and raining consistently extremely hard for 10 hours, 12 hours, something like that. Eesh. So it's just been like, oh, man, we're like really in it. And I don't know. That was just like everything's kind of flooded. And yeah, it sucks. That sucks. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Um, but yeah, yesterday was the final day of my term that I was teaching. Uh huh. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm I'm in this weird zone of like, oh, I have also like kind of free time for a few weeks, and the like next grades are in and everything. Or is that is that I, kind of automated for you? I have to manually submit grades, but I did it okay. earlier, and um. Like it so that you could still like me. make adjustments if you had to, yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. So that part of it, or if yeah, there's like, it. yeah, if there's late assignments or anything yeah. like that. But yeah, I submitted it all to the registrar today, and I was like, well, okay, there we go. I guess I'll just uh, go about my business. Yep. <laughs> and yeah, and it's not that it's been taking up a lot of my time or anything, but it has been taking up a lot of my like attention yeah. and a lot of my like bandwidth, just mentally, because I want to be there for my students, and I want to. I've had some bad instructors in my time, and I've had some really great ones, and I'm just like trying really hard to set up good habits for myself because this was the first term. So, right. um, yeah, it just sort of sort of ends, and it's like ta da. <laughs> yeah. I, mine was um, our grades were due in on the thirteenth. My last, peer, well, I think I talked. Did I talk last time? It was after did. the ninth, right? So the ninth was our last class period, and and then um, grades were due in on the thirteenth. And there was a couple of people who did a late assignment because I told them I'd give them half credit for late assignments. So the, mm-hmm. a couple of people popped in, um, popped in there at the end. But yeah, it was just like the process of pounding in. And I didn't know what I thought was going to happen either, right? Like, is yeah. there going to be this grand thing? Like, <laughs> Farewell, <laughs> Oh, students. congratulations, yes. faculty and students, on another great term, you know. You've but done just, it. Yeah. Just nothing happens. You just It's, it's pretty anticlimactic. <laughs> I did get some nice emails from some students that were like, you know, I, I learned a lot. I had a really great experience. And I was like, oh, yeah. that's like so nice, so validating to hear in my first term. Yeah. So that was good. Um, but yeah, I, I'm pick, I uh, picked up the next one, which starts on the 8th. So yeah, I was just like getting that set up, getting that ready to rock today. Um, but yeah. yeah. Cool. I was about to yeah. say, I didn't get any nice emails, but I suppose I saw everyone in, person, in person on their yeah. individual last day. And so I had I had a few of those conversations. But yeah. So like all day today, it's yeah. dark. Yeah. It's December, right? I have finished this thing with my job and I'm like, ah, right? Like I can maybe, and I'm like feeling really behind the eight ball with Christmas right now too. It's just like not coming together yeah. this year and it's frustrating and it's like in seven days or something. So anyway, so I sit down to eat dinner a little while ago and put on a show because I'm a normal person and watch TV while I eat food. <laughs> and Beth is like, so Everybody podcast tonight. <laughs> Beth was like, so podcast tonight. And I was like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I had completely forgotten. Like, we're never like, going to really it, forgot this, this time. This is like, like a it was segment bad. of the show where we just kind of make casual reference to how we have absolutely no idea what we're doing. Yeah. But like, <laughs> that has turned into like, oh, I'll, I'll usually check for some stuff to talk about. Yeah. On the day we record, instead of in the weeks between, and mm-hmm. this was like, uh oh, I have to go record in thirty minutes, and I squarely forgot <laughs> the yeah. whole day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's where we are. There is one thing in the notes uh-huh. that I there's like a gu- there's a guitar <laughs> new. See, because it's it's as <laughs> yeah. though there's only one. There's only one new. Yep. There's only one new today. Not multiple um, news. Um, I love that. I'm very pleased that I said that. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, it's just, uh, I actually, remember when I told you I got rear-ended? Yes. When that was, what, three months ago in September like or something? At least two episodes ago, two or three episodes ago. It was ago. way longer ago than that, yeah. but yeah. Um, in a drive through right? In a drive through right? Yeah. I was waiting for a coffee and I got bumped from, right. from behind. And it squished in the back of the car and stuff in a way that's like not... I, my car is like fairly new still, so I don't want to just ignore it. Uh, yeah. It's finally getting fixed tomorrow. All right. On so the solstice. It took, 
on close to oh, it. Fucking that fucking long, right? To get an appointment. <laughs> so, Unbelievable. It's insane. So the Earth I'm is like, literally <sighs> in a different place in space. <laughs> it's taking <laughs> so long. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I, you know, I call the insurance company and the body shops, and they're like, "Yeah, uh, all the body shops in New Hampshire are like really booked, like really booked." And the insurance yeah. guy was like, "We don't." He said something like, "We don't know what's going on up there." <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, "Not in New Hampshire." The insurance no. guy, he's like, yeah. "I don't know what's up with your state, sir." He's like, "Yeah, I don't know what's going on, but all these places are booked, so you're just gonna have to do the best you can." I was like, "Okay," <laughs> such a weird thing to say, but yeah, sure enough. So wow. now I have an appointment tomorrow morning, and I gotta leave my car for like ten fucking days. To get yeah. fixed. And oh my God. So I know. So, and guess what's happening in the next 10 days? Fucking Christmas. It's, so. <laughs> uh, it's going to be that, that, that there are holidays. Yeah. That there are gosh darn holidays. So, uh, we're renting a minivan on the insurance company's dime. Hey, and try out minivans. Yeah. Cause what if I you figured, like it? I think we will. I think because <laughs> we're traveling with the dog too. Yeah. So it's like a full car. Right. Because Charlie travels in his crate. So, like, he, so I figured whatever we rent, even if they give me the same car that I have, it's not going to have the roof rack that will fit my Thule box. So, I need something sure. that oh, inside yeah. is bigger. So, I was like, how about a minivan? And the guy was like, yeah, that's budgeted for with the insurance company, X dollars per day, whatever. I was like, yeah, all right. Now all we're right. talking. I can just like drive a living room across New England and we'll be good to go. <laughs> I haven't um, experienced real minivanness since I was, you know, like a teenager, and my my parents had one. I think. Mm. Yeah, and, I had one um, when I was a kid. We had one when I was a kid. I bet they've come a long way. I bet it's. I bet it's some very, friends of ours, very Cadillac by now. From <laughs> some friends of ours have one, and we've driven it into Boston for like if the the gang is going to a concert or something, yeah, or going yeah. to something like that, and we hop in, and it's just like this is great. Right? Why? Why is there all this shade on minivans? Why? And, yeah. Why do I feel this way? About why have I been, I've been cultured to feel the uh, way I do about minivans? And like minivans. everybody's got their own space. You got tons of room. Everyone's tons, got a yes. captain's seat. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, this actually rules. <laughs> you know, that's funny. So we had um, we had a rental instead of our Rav Four for a couple of days. Actually, through a week, it ended up rolling over because there was um there was some kind of recall thing to do mm. with the charger, the electric, because ours is a plug-in, yeah. And it stopped it stopped getting enough juice out of its chargers. Charger wasn't producing as much mm. as it used to, and it turned out there was some kind of recall part. But they had to have it for a little while because the part is very every time. And I think this isn't typical if you were like on the states that touch water kind of zones in the in the <laughs> country because the Rav Four yeah. Prime is like very. It's very hard green to leaf kind of situation yeah. for Toyota, so they really focused it on the the states that seem to like that stuff. And Ohio apparently does mm. not qualify for that shit. We we drove to Vermont <laughs> to buy this car. That's what yeah. happened. Yeah. Um, anyway, um, every time we have somebody work on it, and it's anything other than just routine maintenance, they're always like, "Oh, geez, oh man." We have you no have the fucking, difficult one. Yeah, you yeah, went out of the park. And it's like eventually we get, you know, we get a bunch of like, I've never seen this car before. We, You're the only one we know. By the way, I have seen another one in Cincinnati. I've seen a few around here, <laughs> just like one or two, and I think yeah. it's probably the same person. Right. I've seen like one <laughs> other prime in our in our city. But anyway, um, they get this like, we eventually the service manager's like, okay, so listen, I'm not going to lie to you. This is a rare car, and... I have the I have the info. Like I have the info, but I'm going to be reading it in order to work, you know what I mean? Like he's not going to lie yeah. to me, but he's t- you know. So anyway, they had it's it like for we're, a while. We're learning it together here. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> One why chapter did I, why did I go on this crazy story? Oh, oh cuz we, we had a rental and they gave us like a Tacoma or something, oh, which is like a full a fucking SUV. Or no, so you're right, Tacoma. It wasn't that. It was it was an SUV, but it was like a full fucking sized SUV. Oh, yeah. Like no, not like, a crossover. Yeah, like Toyota's equivalent to like a fucking Sequoia? whatever it is, Escalade or Sequoia. Yeah. That might have been it. Anyway, it was giant. So like the back seats are all like captain's chairs and they mm-hmm. got the arms and Aria was having it. Oh, day. she must have been. She's like she, driving around in her bedroom. Yeah. She was having such a good time. <laughs> and she went out there. She like brought toys out there and she just yeah, played so in the car. Room. 
in the garage. She was, that was her playhouse for like two or three oh days. God. After school, it. she just brought things and she was like, hey, come on out here. And she played, now I'm, now we're an airplane and I'm the pilot. And then she'd climb into the back and now we're a bus and I'm a this. And oh, the food service is coming around. And she had like a tray. <laughs> it was crazy. I don't know why I didn't tell that story already. It's hilarious, but I'm oh, glad it made so it good. into an episode. <laughs> that's so good. Wow. Yeah. Just thrilled oh, as man. fuck. I know Jack's going to be like, the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> this isn't our car. <laughs> Have him stand up, run around in it. Hey. <laughs> he's going to think. Honestly, he, he could. Yeah. That's, you got to point really out the greatness idea. to him, and he's going to be like, this is awesome. Whoa. <laughs> and then he'll just have a harder time getting in the car seat. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. Maybe don't, maybe don't reveal to him that sometimes you can yeah. be not in a car seat. Yeah. He if that possibility is a mystery, then. Not being in the car seat has entered the chat. Anyway, we should like oh, talk about dear. the show. Okay, <sighs> we should. All right, let's do something. Let's do something show related. And I'm going to play a thing. All right. So first up, a bit of a bit of who gives a fuck news from. <sighs> Ya boys down at Magnetone? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Wait, so, hold on. I got to pull up my thing. Yeah. No, you go ahead. Okay. So Magnetone and is. Slash. Magnetone and Slash yeah. are in cahoots. They love it. They love each other. Um, which I'm a little surprised about considering that he's like the Gibson brand ambassador or whatever that it means. And now they own Mesa Boogie. So I like... It's just surprising to see him uh, yeah. being endorsed by someone else. Um, Magnetone has put out this, I guess, JCM 800 inspired. Sure looks like it to me. Uh, amp head with Slash's name on it. And um, it's like $5,000. And I, I'm really struggling with yeah. the concept behind like artist endorsements and the price yeah 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 and like the the also the impracticality of a 100 watt non power scaling tube head right i mean no you do direct have out to or anything like you have to be in that zone yeah so so that's i mean that's what like, we got. I know. It's probably Look, like, a relatively faithful jcm 800 yeah. kind of thing like they're not going to they're not putting me, uh, i i take it from your your rant there. They're not putting modern appointments on here. I well, it's just like it is just the amp, and that's cool. Like, look, I know I am not playing the same game Slash is playing. And like that's totally <laughs> yeah. fine. This this yeah, is a I product mean, you're, that's you're not turning clearly, up in insurance com- commercials. <laughs> no, this this product is not for me. And like it's the yeah, company has yeah. not made this with me in mind, which is totally fine. I think it's just kind of I don't know. I the tone deafness is kind of surprising to me as we like move into this like future state of guitar stuff, specifically amps and there's still this narrative of like yeah, but the tone, right? The two right. tone and like but the as guitar legend. This legends, is the only way to achieve the the a, yeah. a sound that would satisfy the slash the slash guy. Right. It's yeah. and it's I like 4000 I like this green alligator skin or whatever the hell. That's yeah, probably I think why it's it costs snake so skin. much. Yeah, it's cool looking. <laughs> I'll give him that. It's. I wish Slash's fucking logo wasn't scribbled on it, but whatever. That would that buff a, out. <laughs> just grind it I out. I would love that. You buy. You pay five grand for like the collector's item signature amp, and then just fucking buff it out with a, with a little angle grinder. Oh, yeah, we can like, take that right out there. <laughs> yeah, looks like shit afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. It's got an effects loop. It's got the two foot switchable gain modes and stuff, and like yeah. it's got a master volume and, and things like that, which is cool. But like it's it's objectively cool in the way that like all guitar yeah. gear is cool and like big loud amps are cool. But exactly. it's forty nine hundred dollars yeah. for just the head, right? And there's a matching cabinet that is also twenty seven hundred dollars, and I'm just like That's really struggling. That's I'm really having a hard time with a $2,700 412 that has nothing but regular stock vintage 30s in it. What's so what's the, up with the, what's up with this little socket though? Here, can I? What is that? Oh, it's oh, the, it's got um, MIDI. It's got MIDI no, jacks it, on it's it. It's not a it's not five pin. It's four pin. It's for the lighting. 
There's lights in the cab. There's lights. In, oh, well, that's why it's... <laughs> Well, hold the phone. It's just, it lights up the logo. That's all it does. Like my Rev does uh-huh. the same thing. It's got the same connector. And just so you can daisy chain them together, it's just oh, a little. Oh, that's kind of rad. So is that like, I didn't even know that they there was a, so we're settling on a standard for our, our amp RGB, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's just this little four pin connector that looks like MIDI, but it's missing a pin. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, and again, looks sick, right? It's got yeah. the, the, the snake skin, which is very slash. Slash a snake right. pit and all that stuff. Exactly. But yeah. again, like it's a 412 with vintage 30s and it's yeah. closing in on three grand. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. The nice what the little fuck angle is the back. matter with you? So like so like if if Mesa or Marshall makes me a 412, like an angle, angle edition, like basically this is like bottom cab here is what I'm looking at. If I look at bottom cab, vintage 30s, I'm guessing 700 bucks. Oh, it's more than that. Is it? Um, okay. Marshall 412. Let's see what Sweetwater says. I think they're like, so here's a Marshall, which is the one? That is it the 1960A? Oh. I uh, thought 1960A was like the one that's going to have greenbacks in it. But I could Here's be a wrong. 412 angled extension cab. What's in this? Um, Celestion G12E60s. And it's six fifty. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you're you're so closer. It's essentially but I think, vintage thirties, but yeah. Um is vintage thirty confusingly a sixty watt speaker. <laughs> Never uh, understood that. G twelve E sixties in this one as well, five fifty. So again, okay. so the point is like you can get a Marshall brand or yeah. or any other four twelve really with kind of whatever you want in it, but a four twelve with um, four vintage thirties does not twenty seven hundred dollars make. So no, so, uh, so and it's I'm just snake like skin and the RGB and the RGB and I I I don't know. It just kind of irks me. It feels yeah. gross. Like the, the the we haven't really talked a ton about artist endorsements, but I think this is the kind of thing that is so clearly just like a brand deal, right? You know, right. and there's some there's some like blog post on the Magnetone website about how Slash tried a Magnetone amp in the studio earlier this year, and it was a big hit, and he was blown away. Like, great, whatever. No, I don't buy that because why the fuck would he then turn around and say, "Well, my signature is going to be an exact goddamn copy of the thing that I've been playing for forty years." Yeah, and so it's like a pretty close copy, but it's still like a, it's the Magnetone version, so it's a little different or whatever. Okay. But let's not we're not going to budge on the speaker choice, right? Like so And okay. and they <laughs> copy they still copied the thing he's been after. So it's not like he encountered something that blew him away. That's not what happened. What he didn't happened plug was, into a deluxe. Like he didn't plug into a Fender Twin. <laughs> right. you know? He didn't plug into something different and say, "Oh man, you guys have really stumbled onto something here." No, he was like, <laughs> "Well, sure, you can put my name on it." Just make me a thing that's basically what I already have. Put some yeah. snake skin on it. Charge a bill, and let's let's, let's we're in let's business. Let's do this thing. Yeah, yeah, let's let's do it. Um, so I don't know, like I artist endorsements. There's plenty of artists out there that I think deserve an endorsement, or I think would be really powerful people to have in an artist roster for a brand. Yeah. Um, and I don't see them. Because again, like I know my music taste and the artists I listen to are pretty niche, but um, like yeah. Coheed, right? Coheed's a big band. Yeah. Why are they not on the Gibson roster, right? They both yeah. play Gibsons and they're really known for it. Right. And I'm just surprised that those guys aren't all over the Gibson homepage and it's still fuckers like so, Slash and Gene Simmons. Right. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Assholes. Um, I don't like, know if Slash is an asshole. Uh, Gene Simmons is an asshole. Anyway. You know what I'm saying, though. Like, yeah, get, no, get no, these, I do. Get this I, gear into the hands of some people who are doing newer, and Coheed's not even that new, doing, or not new but at like all, artists, doing artists exciting like you're talking about, things. Though, they do have, indoor, it's not Gibson, it's, but they, they always have, like, bands like that, it's always like the drummer mm. has a particular sticks and cymbals or whatever, and they, yeah. they, Right, like I just I don't I think I'm just getting so tired of like the guitar legends yeah. angle because these people have been in the narrative since I was like 14, and I'm just so bored of it. <laughs> <laughs> like, right, and that's from like like you you like a lot of classic rock. Yeah. So it's I not do. like it's not like 
But I'm not out here saying that Slash is the end, right? Like, there's plenty of people who (laughs) are thinking, like, Slash, Clapton, you know, all these guys are, like, Like, there's nobody's been happening since then, yeah. Yeah, which is just false (laughs) and and kind of keeping your head in the sand. So I think there's plenty of other, I'm going on, like, a soapbox here, I guess, but there's plenty of other, I think, more modern and interesting artists that could move these brands in a direction that they are not exploring. yeah. That would be really cool. And Fender does this all the time. Yeah, I mean, what was going on in Magnetone's lineup that they needed to make this? I think it's a bigger deal for Magnetone than it is for Slash. Oh, I I bet. Yeah. And I mean, is this, this is just, they probably already have this amp on their shelf. Just so something like it, I being assume. Being the signature I have no model, idea. right? Like without the snakeskin and the and having having burned off the logo, Magnetone, the SL100... Oh, I guess it's not the um, SL, right? It would be the M100 or something. Whatever, yeah. (laughs) Magnetone, to me, occupies the same space as like Supro. I know they're they're like one of these old brands that like did not get the massive success that like Fender Marshall Orange Vox did. Mm -hmm. But they're still like really well known. They're still there, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. It's just, mm, I don't know. It's, It's odd, I guess. And like Fender puts out a Corey Wong guitar, right? A guy, a musician who's kind of mostly only known by other musicians, let's say, right? (laughs) Right. Like there's, there's obviously overlap, but I, I think that's a way more, and yeah, I'm fully aware that that's just a brand deal. Like they just, they worked out the money and the specs and that's how it shakes out for that kind of thing. But I think he's still a way more interesting person to have in the lineup who's doing more interesting things musically. Than the guy who was famous 30, 40 years ago. Yeah. And, and it's still changed. just famous by proxy. Yeah. So, I don't know. You know? <laughs> so, if, if you make a... <coughs> so, if you're Magnetone and you make something like this, how many do you make? Oh. I mean, it's on pre Sometimes they say. I don't think it's limited. Oh, Is you it? think it's just going to be something they... All right. Well, I guess then what I mean is like, how many are you moving a year? How many units are you stocking? So it says on the right on the magnetoneusa.com, Magnetone announces partnership with Slash and his shirt's unbuttoned and everything. And he's looking real cool. Yeah. Um, it's the first time he's collaborating with a new amplifier company in over 30 years. Like, is that the exciting part? Apparently. Apparently, we were all just sitting around going, yeah, but where, where's what, what? What amp is Slash endorsing for the last thirty years? Where's Slash been on my people trying to convince me to buy an amp list? The iconic, Grammy-winning American rock guitarist, songwriter, and film producer Slash. What? Okay, me too, <laughs> bud. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Hold on, no, wait, wait, let's not bury the lead here. Let's look up, so to Google, Slash's film. Oh, no, I shouldn't look up Slash film, should I? (laughs) Hold on, Uh, I'll take it back. It's due out in early 2024, and it says here that he purchased several Magnetone M80s, as well as a Twilighter stereo. Slash began testing both of these live and in the studio, um, and was impressed, I guess. I don't know. It's just... uh, Okay. So let's cool. say we be- let's say we believe that story. I'm willing then, to believe it. That's fine. Then why did he when he when he said, "Okay, I like your amps. Now make me one." Why did it become a JCM 800? <laughs> if he tried out these other things in the studio and on stage, why didn't he say, "Make me one of these with snakeskin?" No, he said, "Make me a JCM 800 with snakeskin." Yeah. Thank you very much. What is the M80? Uh, the Super 59 M80. Uh, looks like it's a 45 watt EL34 driven. It's know, a Marshall. It's British voiced master volume designed amp. So. <laughs> yeah. That shit is a 50 watt Marshall, baby. So. <laughs> okay. I'm just, I think part of the, part of the thing that's really interesting to me too is that people, this will sell. Like stuff with sure. Slash's name, stuff with all these guys' names on it always sells. Who's yeah. buying it? 
Who's who yeah, is the it collector? For? Right. I guess the 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 blues lawyer. I don't know. It, it's <laughs> who is who's like oh cool. Like I love Slash so much. Yeah. I need this. <laughs> I, I mean, the thing and the is, whole like, rig I, is so I get fucking the, expensive. I get the tone of your voice when you say that, but there is like <laughs> I know. And you know what? It's probably not dozens of people. You know, mm-hmm. it's probably hundreds and hundreds of people. So to go all in with the amp and cab is $7,600. Yeah. So what about if you add the guitar too? Oh, I don't even know. Which one? <laughs> He's got fucking 700 different, you know, yep. such and such editions from Gibson. Ring them up. All right, let's see. Slash. I'm just going to search. So, <laughs> I'm right. just going to search Sweetwater for Slash. Here we go. <laughs> the Appetite Les Paul, $3,200. Okay. Yep. So I'll, so I'll add. What did I say? We'll it was seventy six hundred. Seventy six. Six hundred plus. What was it? Thirty two hundred dollars. We're in over ten grand now, and you can't be doing yep. any of this without a wah pedal. Of course, <laughs> we have. A, I assume we have a slash signature wah pedal. Does he have signature strings? I bet. Here it is. The two hundred dollar slash wah pedal. God, what the fuck? <laughs> you know that's really reasonable as far as slash gear goes. That's what I've learned. <laughs> <laughs> I don't pedal, see any really I don't reasonable. see any slash strings, but we're that that you know, no strings, cables, speaker cables included. <laughs> that that pushes us so into I'm, literally we've already, eleven thousand dollars. <laughs> we're already hitting a roadblock if we actually want to make any music with our fully slash guitarist outfitting here. I think it's really funny that on this amp page they're like <laughs> Complete the setup, and it shows the cab, right? And it shows right. like a ten dollars speaker cable. <laughs> it just strikes me as like, yeah, you can get everything you need. <laughs> is that? Oh, is that on the? That's not on here. Oh, there it's he most, is. There's there's his belly yeah. button. I mean, slash <laughs> his belly buttonness slash. <laughs> <laughs> He's making that face. I'm you know too cool one. to be here, but also. Yeah. Duck lips. <laughs> oh also, God. I really like go back down to those features. Okay, the bullet, the bullets next to Slash's belly button. Yeah, um, right there. Br- uh, this is a feature, British inspired aesthetics. You know, so I noticed this in my in in the class I was teaching. I, I gave this assignment where I was just like, uh, it was very fluffy. A lot of my assignments were, it was basically just. Prove that you read through the manual of this mixing console that we're using here. Mm. And it was like a P- PDF, right? And so I was basically like, what's the, you know, what's the range of the 30 Q knob? And I was like, literally copy and paste this to me. You'll prove that you poked through the manual to find it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Um, and I said, I, one of the questions, list, um, list me two features of this console. And because on one of the page, it says features just like this, right? And it's a bullet list. And one of them was designed in Great Britain. Not a feature. (laughs) Not a feature. And one of my students, most of them picked out things that were features. And one of my students wrote like, it has 12 faders. It's designed in Britain, comma, apparently. (laughs) And I was like... (laughs) Full credit. You get 100% on this assignment. <laughs> Apparently. Oh, my God. So that, that reminds me. In in the final week of my yeah. class, the, the final project is due the week before the course ends. Right. So there's time to grade it and things like that. So the final week is often dedicated to like reflection work, um, critique work, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and in the reflection, it's like, you know, it's, this is a very early course in the program. So, you know, a lot of first time college students and things like that. And it's like, so just like reflect on your process. Like what are the things that you, uh, like will take into your, the rest of your program? Like mm-hmm. what are the, the most important things you learned, do you think? And how did this go? And just reflect on these things in two pages, very short. Yeah. And at some point somebody uh, thinks this is a review for my class <laughs> and starts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which it's not, that's a separate process. But then they just in the like near the end in their concluding statement, they're like, so in conclusion, I would give this class a solid 84. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, uh, okay. (laughs) Okay, Miss C plus. (laughs) A solid 84. 
She's like, my experience was overall positive, um, but I ran into trouble with blah, 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 whatever it was. I was, so I would give it a solid 84. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> what do you think is happening here? <laughs> No, first of all, who asked you? <laughs> Second of all, how Four dare stars. you? <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I just I, I when their features like designed in England or yeah. British inspired aesthetics, not it's not a feature. Slash's Scully logo. That's cool. The, that's that shit that we were going to burn off. Just buff it out. The Logan mode is reminiscent. Of a 60s era British design. Independent low and high gain knobs. So reminiscent just means it will make us think about it, right? So if we hear this you It makes you reminisce. We will just just think about the 60s. Yeah. (laughs) Ah, Those British tones of the 60s. (laughs) Another feature developed in collaboration with Slash himself. Not really a feature of the hardware. Okay, okay. Right, like, maybe it is, I don't know. Well, okay, I, I, I'm going to call that a feature because that is yeah. not true for most other amps. All right, fine, yeah. Technically a feature. <laughs> <laughs> high high gain uh, mode gives rise to the modded, cascaded gain preamp sound that ruled the 80s. So, so oh, hold on, hold on. <laughs> yeah, so it's a vintage <laughs> it Marshall. Gives, it's a vintage modded Marshall. No, no, Derek, you're missing it. it this... This high gain mode oh. gave rise to that. Oh. <laughs> this is yeah. responsible for the high gain sound that ruled the 80s. I thought that was Slash's belly button. <laughs> just still just staring me in the here. face. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> what is okay. up with that, dude? <sighs> How old is he? Too old for a belly button ring. Don't tell him He's I said so. Though. Yeah. Yeah, that's too old for a belly button ring. You heard it here first, you know, yep. folks. Fifty-eight. So, all right, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get slash off my off my screen now. Um, yeah. So that's all. I just I hate this. <laughs> 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 Wait, how long did we talk about it? I fucking yeah. hate this. <laughs> I hate it. I just think it's like so clearly. It sucks. <laughs> like it's just. Yeah, it I, but sucks again, that it like mag, Magnetone, like when they were looking at their market and they were looking at guitarists, I was on the the deck that got thrown away. Like I am not the target customer, <laughs> yeah. and that's fine. I totally recognize yeah, that, yeah. but it's still just like guys, read the room. Right? No. <sighs> yeah, yeah. Um, but they, you know, what, uh, they're going to make money. I bet. I mean, with Again, margins I, like that, that I'm sure I'm yeah. sure the margin on this thing. I've referenced this like coheed with Gibson thing in the past, yeah. I think in Discord, and I cannot tell you how excited I would be if I found out that they're doing a Claudio Explorer, and because mm-hmm. he uses these kind of obscure ones from the '80s that are, I think it's an Explorer Two, it's called, and it's got these oh. other slightly different body shape and stuff, different construction. I think that would be so rad. And yeah. Travis has a handful of Les Pauls that are all super cool. I think like it's, that's a way more interesting conversation. I think <laughs> like what what is left Truly. to say about Appetite for Destruction? I've I've got nothing for that. Let's yeah. move on. Let's move on. Okay, dude. I was in. Here's here, oh, I'm going to squeeze in another thing that happened. Okay. In all between right. things here, because again, there's nothing else after the notes. Do you want to play a bounce <laughs> here? I'm going to play a. Here. Sure. Classic. Wicked. I got my, um, I got some letters after my name recently. I got a certified, I am now a certified Scrum product owner, which is a thing from work. It's a whole okay thing. So I'm a CSPO. Um, where was I going with this? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, um, oh, that sucks. It was in the chamber. This sucks really bad. It was right there. And I was like, yeah, do a thing. I'll remember. Nope. <laughs> Shit. I'm sorry. That's okay. What um, are we talking about? Um, it was It was basically that you hate Slash and wish... No, you hate this amp and wish that Coheed had... No, had it's gone. Own. Damn. Oh, oh it was like going to be a good story, hmm. too. I can't remember. Oh, man. If it comes Something? back, I'll just like throw it in. But 
Well, don't you hate that? You can like what, yeah, I do. the feeling of like it's going away and right. you just can't grab it. Can't can't quite. Oh. Fucking sucks. CSPO. What was it? Damn. Oh well, whatever. Mm. What's going on? <laughs> what do you want to talk about? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um well, so I was gonna just I guess I, I've been um I know this is not the first time I brought this up, but like I've been doing my music mixing in uh, Luna, the DAW that UAD made. Um, apparently, it was uh, it it started. It became a product like a lot longer ago than I thought. I guess it's because I waited years. Bef- yeah, um, oh. I, I waited years before I kind of jumped on board. It only recently became uh, free to use outside mm-hmm. of for people who had the hardware. I feel like I heard about it like a year or two ago. Is it older that's, than that's that? That's around when I started kind of paying attention. It is. It's like it oh. goes back to it goes back maybe till 2018 or something. Oh. Anyway, um, but it's but there was there was a lot of growing pains and it was very very buggy at first and had very few features. So it's a lot of things have been coming along and eventually I kind of it it, it becoming I think it it kind of got to this level where I could really successfully use it to do a music mix and I wasn't going to just get so stumbled that I just go, oh, this is stupid and drop it and move my shit back to Pro Tools or something. That <clears throat> that kind of turning point, I think, coincided with when Avid started fucking me over with the, the cost of things. And like, so, yeah, I was, gonna I was not you, happy about Pro Tools. Is part of this a journey for you to explore leaving Pro Tools? I've I've largely left Pro Tools. Um, I think that that has a lot to do with it. I really wouldn't have been poking around with things if Pro Tools hadn't mm-hmm. gone and like changed the pricing structure. And at this point, what sucks now is like as of this calendar year, they've kind of gone back to the way things used to be. And if I just oh. stuck to my guns, I probably would have been fine if I'd ridden out the like five years that you had to huh. sit through this crap. So, um, yeah. Uh, refresh my memory. It was. Like an like an edition thing, like the new edition would come out and you'd buy it and you'd have that, and then then it moved to subscription. Yeah. So so what they did is they um, <clears throat> they didn't they they did you know little dot releases all the time. They had they had gotten onto like sort of a dated release. So the the okay. whatever's going on is like the year dot the month. Okay. So there's not a release every month, but. There's not two releases in a month, so they can just use that numbering. So basically, that's that's what they've been on since for for several years now. Mm-hmm. Um, what happened was previous to that, that you, you would basically you would buy an update plan, so you would pay for updates for a year, and for that year you're current and you are paying for support too. If you have problems, okay. they will talk to you. Um, if you and I had a perpetual license, so if I stopped paying for that, I would just have whatever version I ended at forever, mm-hmm. kind of thing. And that's the thing. If I had done that, I probably would have been fine. I wouldn't have missed any of those features. And then they would have just avid mm-hmm. avid got bought. They're now private. They're no longer um, oh, a I didn't publicly know that. traded company. Okay. Yeah, that was a few months ago now too. So everything's oh. kind of switching around and. Um, hopefully for the better for them. It's not like I wish anything ill of them, but unfortunately, in the meantime, I've I moved on. Like I basically anything that's kind of not music based, like dialogue based stuff, I'm doing in Reaper now, and I'm happier. the The feature set is better, and its video support is better. Um, there's a huge learning curve on Reaper, but anyway, I don't yeah, recommend it's, it's it like, to beginners. <laughs> it's like too customizable, right? Like you yes, can, and yeah. and the defaults are insane. <laughs> One of mm-hmm. the one of the like major co- uh, content creators like that's focused on Reaper is, is for people in my business. Um, he has a video that is just called "The Defaults Are Insane," <laughs> and where he just goes over here's what my <laughs> defaults are. You should copy these kind of thing. Um, once you get re- anyway, whatever. So I, I'm using Reaper for dialogue, and I was still kind of using Pro Tools for music stuff, but I was like in the in the business to get out of it, and that's around when I tried Luna, and several like in the in the year or so since I've been sort of paying attention to it, it really has come even a long way since then, and um, it's smoothed out a lot. Um, so the last at least 
20 music mixes I've done entirely in Luna the last for at least the last year every time I have an artist in my studio because I have the hardware that goes with it I'm using Luna because it's totally integrated and I can record with all of my like software mm-hmm. UAD stuff and it's without showing me it's just in the background it's changing between host based and hardware based as needed like if I have a mix that's full of shit and I push record enable on a channel, it'll switch that channel and any reverbs and stuff that are attached to it to hardware mode so that they are latency free. And like, you don't have to wait for that to happen. On the fly. I mean, yeah. it, maybe it pinwheels for a second if my computer's really loaded up, you know what I mean? But like, it well, just okay, goes, still, I'm on like, hardware mode now because it's taking, yeah. you know what I mean? And because that's that's why I got into this UAD stuff in the beginning because the plugins yeah. that run on the hardware, I can do no latency mode on stuff like that. So. It's the kind of integration that you want. It's that it's the workflow is what yeah. it really comes down to. So um, with these, the I, I would, the the last few weeks I've been working on like um, three different bands stuff, and just my head was so into the UAD thing and the holiday sale going on. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna pick up something. I actually I went and picked up. Um, this guy. Oh, the diesel. Is it the VH4? The, it's the VH4. Yeah. So they uh, UAD actually has two diesels. They have the Herbert as well. The um, VH4 is like the one, though. Yeah, the, the Herbert's <laughs> like a three-channel, and and it's it's pretty good too. I think ultimately I a beat them against each other, and I come out. Wow, it's just like a hundred bucks off. It's yes. It's well, more than that, the, yeah. now what we're seeing there, right? That's the current sale price. Like forty-four dollars is what they want for it right now. That's um, a good deal. Which is a good fucking deal. Um, <clears throat> yeah, VH4, the fortune. For, for one thing, it it it's not that it's not that the angle, the Savage 120 that I've been using for this these kinds of sounds don't work. But this thing has yeah. a lot of killer clean tones and stuff too. It's kind of amazing that everything that's po- packed into this VH4. And I've never like played with one in physical form, but. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know, the control are, layout makes perfect sense. And now I look back at the angle, the Savage 120, the front <laughs> panel layout is a fucking nightmare. <laughs> it's like figuring out which knobs are attached <laughs> to which channel and how to switch the channels is insane. Um, it's another Brainworks developed plugin. So it has the same, um, what happens with these is you have the plugin and I wonder if they'll show it here. Oh, there. So basically in the plugin interface, if you... If you oh, click wow. the top part, it reveals sort of the plug-in controls. Yeah. So, and this is the same. These are all the same controls as the as the angle. All the Brainworks amps have that. So you have your IR loader thing on the lower left. It has it has a built-in gate, which oh, you can use if you want. Um, it has these filters, these um, sort of high and low cut filters, which are pretty useful for getting rid of rumble and extra uh-huh. si- sizzle. There's a built-in delay if you care to use that. It's right here. Huh. Syncs with your the tempo, and then um, some s- sort of power soak features, right? That cool. are purely digital. But like the the control layout, anyway. Um, so yeah, yeah. I, this record I was working on it, it. It I recorded it all with the Angle Savage One Twenty, but I did it with UAD. So I actually recorded a dry DI, and we were just using. So you can just throw it into this time. thing. So I literally like I got down to the mix, and I just switched it to this, and then A beat it back and forth with this and the Herbert and. And uh, and basically, because with you, you can demo them for fourteen days. So I just like turned on my demos, and yeah. um, <clears throat> and then I and it's it's great. So it's it's a little less. I don't know. On the the super high gain channel is a little less woolly, I think, than the the Savage One Twenty. Just on his guitar, I think I think different guitars might favor oh, one yeah. amp or the other. It's that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think on these mixes, I I am liking that. Maybe it's because it's novel to me. <laughs> I don't know, uh, but it sounds great. But so then I like I'm I'm I picked it up, or I I'm demoing it, and then I realize okay I'm definitely going to buy this. Well, the other thing about UAD stuff is when you make a purchase, it actually refreshes your whole account as far as your demo status. So oh, okay. I know I'm going to buy something, so I may as well just demo anything else I'm thinking about. Yeah. Because when I make this purchase, it'll re up those demos, and I could do it again later if I felt like it. Cool. Yeah. So, so the other thing that can happen with Luna is, um, so here's these these software bundles. And by the way, if somebody was interested in in this from a software perspective, uh, they currently have a deal, and I hope it's still going by the time 
this podcast airs. Oh, wait, this is coming out on Christmas. It probably goes through the 31st. Um, but there's a yeah. deal. There's a deal right now where if you if you buy a one year subscription to um, Spark or something like that, I think like basically their their uh, native plugin subscription. That's like you're basically buying all the UAD plugins on a subscription. Um, one year comes with a free um, Volt interface, which is like their oh, yeah. um, Scarlet. USB audio interface competitor. Yeah. It's not it's not a DSP interface, but it's a really quality piece of kit. So if if somebody was like had a cheapy interface and wanted to upgrade to a more pro little two channel interface, mm-hmm. that'd be that'd be a deal That's to a check out because basically you're buying Spark for like ninety nine bucks and getting a ninety nine dollar ish interface for free. Yeah, and if you don't like Spark, you dump it after that. And what have you done? Right, you bought an interface and tried out. Tried out UAD. So yeah. um, I'm trying to get down to the part. Um, okay, well, here's some of the here's some of the things. They the um I don't know if what I'm showing on screen really matters, but the other thing that I tried out because it was also had a really good sale price for for me, especially because I owned a f- couple of these plugins already. And they mm-hmm. always like when there's a bundle, they scale the bu- bundle price based on what you already own. Um so they have this. Thing, the, 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 they have these things integrated into Luna where it's like a console simulation. So this is not entirely new. Like there have been plugins for a long time that simulate like what it's like to just run all your channels through an analog console. And essentially it's just doing an almost nothing amount of processing to every channel. But by the time you put it over like 10 yeah. of them, it's like a little bit of soft clipping and a little bit of EQ and a little bit of gentle saturation based on how they modeled these consoles, right? So um, I tried out basically the API console bundle, which has in which is a Luna extension. So in Luna, it has API summing, essentially pretends to be a console when at the at the points where the channels mix together as far as a little bit of yep. clipping and saturation and it's adjustable headroom. Um, it has basically the channel strip, which is a slight upgrade from the one I have because I bought it like years, like a decade ago when I first got into UAD, but the API channel strip that they make, um, which has the whole thing, preamp, dynamics, EQ, output stage, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. It has the bus compressor from API, the 2500. Um, and possibly that's it. I can't remember if there's something else. I guess that's I guess that's basically it. Well, the preamp every every one of those modules that's in the in the channel strip is also a separate module too. So technically, mm-hmm. the preamp as its own thing is a separate thing. Um, so in the bundle, so basically, I just I just get all these plugins separately, um, and I was like, whatever, I'll, I'll try it out. I really like that channel strip. And the thing is, sure, these are like exquisitely modeled console emulation stuff. But like that's that's not. I'm never gonna tell somebody that's gonna make your mix sound better, mm-hmm. um, because it's super subtle. And frankly, like when I mix through all those sorts of emulation sort of shit that piles up and does very small changes to every channel, I think I think I do notice that I'm using a little bit less compression and maybe a little bit less EQ because some of it just sort of happens. Um, but it doesn't mean you can't just work without it and use a little bit more compression, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's sort of almost pointless in that sense. But here's what I notice is because this is all integrated into Luna and like the console emulation is put in the right point in the chain and the the channel strip, you can basically set this all to be default for Luna. So whenever mm-hmm. I make a new channel, it's it has all this stuff. So I have a console there for me and I'm not like... So this is like a workflow change ends up being the biggest thing. So basically, like, I have a new channel. I make a new track. Oh, here's I drop my guitar on it. If I decide I want to EQ it or compress it, I have to instantiate a compressor, right? I have to go there and, like, let's call up a compressor. Which one do I want to use? Let's call up an EQ. Which EQ plugin do I want to use? None of that happens now. Like, or I mean, it can. I still can put plugins on it. But instead, I've already got this channel strip basically in front of me. Um, and it's already got just waiting. They're sitting there in bypass, just waiting for me to turn a knob and engage it. You know, I've got mm-hmm. filters, I've got a gate, I've got a compressor, um, 
EQ. It's two different types of EQ because there's it's sw- switchable, and just having them right there, and they're not the graphic type. So like, there's two things mm. that I notice as I've done these these mixes. Um, they came out great. Not that I think they wouldn't have without this, but they. Um, it's just everything's kind of there in my face already, and I'm not hunting around like, oh, do I want to EQ this? It's more like, oh, oh this I needs see. a little time. Okay. I just turn the knob. It's already right there, yeah. you know? <clears throat> um, and there's a there's this tendency, and I've fallen for it so much too. Like I've gotten in this habit of like my go-to EQ is one of these where you can see the, the graph and you move the line. Mm-hmm. You, you know, grab little dots and move the line. Nothing wrong with that, but it's also got a spectral analyzer. So I can sort of see the shape of the spectrum of the audio on there, which means my eye is mm-hmm. kind of guiding me what to do when I should be listening. And, oh, okay, right? I see what you're saying. So like I'm it's falling yeah, onto you're, that thing. That crutch of like what you what you're expecting to edit with and like right. what's influencing your yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. thinking this has too much bottom and I turn it on and I can see the bottom there in the graph wiggling around. Yeah. And it's like, ah, now I'm going to grab that. Yeah. And, and it's like, mm. well, it's confirmation bias, right? You right. see it and you're like, I was right. Uh, yes, there is that bottom there. Yeah. Or maybe <clears throat> and, I see a peak somewhere and it wasn't bothering me, but when I see it, I go, oh, maybe I should duck that out. You know, mm. and I, I maybe I maybe I grab a little a little cut in the EQ there. So instead, you know, I have, they have a picture of the, Anyway, there, there, there aren't great pictures of this thing. I guess I should have called up the API um, thing, but the um, the API, you know, it's basically it's there's four band there's a four band EQ and it's knobs, and I mean they're yeah. labeled, so I can I can say oh I wanted to go in for eight kilohertz and adjust that, mm-hmm. but I have to listen for it, and um, and likewise the other type of EQ is like a graphic EQ with sliders and it's like well I'd have to grab the one I want and move it does it sound the mm. way I wanted no move it back you know <laughs> uh, yeah. and and that that's what I'm into and um so it so I ended up buying the thing so <laughs> so I ended Sick. up buying the VH4 and the whole thing because and and it's the integration that that does it like I'm saying it's it's not well, that it just these makes your life that easier. much better like it's right. it's yeah but it's saving you time and headache, yeah. Which keeps you focused, right? Yeah. Which will that will make things sound better is your attention, yeah. right? Right. It's it's all this like it's all connected somehow. It's just not one to one, right? Like right. new gear does not make you play better guitar, right? It's just well, it might make you play more, and yeah. playing more makes you better. So. Yeah. Yeah, I and this, this right, these EQs might make me listen more. Like I might have been tricking myself sometimes, right? And to, or it might just make you approach the whole thing a little bit differently for even yeah. just a little while. Like as you warm up to using it for the first few times, like yeah, you'll you'll be excited to use a new piece of gear, which is right. yeah. worth something. Yeah, it's it's. I don't think it's going to dramatically change the sound of my mixes, except except if if it's like that. If I would have done weird things with EQ because I was looking instead of listening, then yeah. that'll do it. If the compression, if I would have done the compression differently, if I was looking instead of listening, this is, the compression has very little feedback. <laughs> you know what I mean? I can't see a graph of how close am I to the threshold? Mm-hmm. I'll adjust it. You know, it's, it's you know, most of them have auto gain on them, which is great too, but um, so anyway, I'm texting our buddy thing, Taylor on the side here, like because he yeah. has some Apollo hardware, and I was like, "You should get this plug in." <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, "Dude, I already got it. Don't worry." <laughs> he's got the. They have the Eden. They have an Eden base. Right, that's the one too, I sent I, him. I was I like, know, "Look, I know he's gonna. It's on sale if he doesn't have it already." <laughs> he does. Yeah, I was like, "You should. Uh, you probably want this, right?" And he's like, "Oh, yeah. dude, don't worry about. It. I already got it. <laughs> you already got that one. <laughs> Way ahead of you." <clears throat> yeah, I mean, honestly, so at this point, like, I love that workflow. It's not. It's not necessary, like it's an add-on to to Luna, but um, I think it's a really good add-on, and it's not because it's it's this unachievable sound any other way, which is kind of they do sell it like our you know it's like it's immaculately every every capacitor is modeled in the neural net of the blah blah blah. I mean they yeah. they do kind of use that language a little bit, and like they have a they have a pension for the realism, right? So they'll. When I, uh, um, it's kind of a side effect in my opinion, but they seem really excited about it. When I turn on the UAD console, the the API console emulation in here on a channel, it changes the way the fader looks in 
Luna, mm-hmm. because the fader throw now matches the taper of the API Vision console. So oh. visibly, and when I move the mouse, it behaves with the it's whatever exact yeah. logarithmic scale their faders on that hardware unit used it, to the extent that like it will Fuck. start to clip at the point where that console started to clip. So that's the other thing is like, from a beginner perspective, if you never put any of this stuff, this analog stuff on your session, everything's every DAW does like 64-bit floating point. Like your waveform could bounce off the moon 240,000 miles away before it clips, right? The, In the, digital. You're just saying words at me now. So. Well, okay, so... <laughs> yeah, so okay. Uh, I, I don't need could, the explanation, but yeah. Floating, okay. Right, floating point basically <laughs> means um, it can move the decimal point so the computer can effectively represent any number. It's like okay, effectively okay. impossible to clip when you're in floating point, and that's how everything processes now with modern computers. But when I put this on, it's not going to do that. It's going to start to clip because yeah. that's what it's modeled to do. So it, technically, it should. Yeah. by turning that on, I have the ability to fuck up my gain staging now in a way where gain staging doesn't matter has been sort of a theme of the last 10 years because mm. if you really are working purely in digital, in many cases, gain staging doesn't matter. I see. Um, okay. But it, but this, so you have you have some rope to hang yourself by, but, um, but workflow-wise, I just think like having them all there so I'm not going to reach for some graphical EQ unless there's some really surgical thing that it turns out I do need to do. But I wonder, am I going to yeah. run into those cases now? Or am I just going to accept what's there and yeah, sometimes less is more? Yeah, I think, hmm, it, it's... The, the tool, it's not like you're getting rid of a tool, right? So that, that will right. always be there if, yeah. if the case arises. But right. I think you'd have to decide, like, I don't know, w- would it be worth testing or worth, like, can you, can you test this? Like, if you could do... You can, with one click, you can bypass all the extensions. I know, but I just mean, like, if you <laughs> did, like, a whole shebang, yeah. like a whole production on something right. in a day or whatever, just like a little yeah. short, like, like a, a, a demo like that I would do. And then yeah. a week later... Fresh ears, do it again the other way. And not turn on the thing. Right. Because you'd have to go through that whole process. Yeah. This is what you're saying to me, right? Like, because I can bypass all this stuff with a click just to check it. And yes, it sounds different. It's not. Yeah. A huge I just mean like you, but it is your behavior but, with the tools. Right. Yeah. That's like the thing you, you'd have to somehow yeah. AB. <laughs> Which the only thing I can think to do would be to really separate them in time a lot. So you're right. like yeah. by a week or a month yeah. or something like that. So you're. Really like coming in fresh and not not really thinking about what you did before. Yeah. Right. You know, that's, that'd be not interesting. remembering. You'd have to scramble yeah. your brain to not remember what you did. Yeah. It's um, but it's 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 cleverly integrated. Um, so it's really it's a neat it's a neat little thing. I'm very very happy with the way it works out because it's integrated into the DAW. But also, like I said, you can still put plugins in here and like where that channel strip happens. Um, I can move that. Like that appears as this block in my plugins list. And it's by default, it's at the top. But like, for example, I have tracks that have um, drum triggers. Mm -hmm. So I don't want this console emulation before the drum triggers. I want it after the drum trigger plugin, right? So I just move the console slot down there. And now, Mm -hmm. even though it's integrated into Luna and it appears in a certain spot on my screen, where it is in the signal chain is assignable by me so that I can make sure it's in that right spot. And and likewise, I could take an old mix when I didn't have this API console, pull it all up, and just put the API console at the end and be like, okay, so here's my mix that I did without it. And I'm just A, Bing, basically, I could just bypass or unbypass, like just the, the summing, just the, you know, yeah. The analog model of like what it sounds like in these faders, kind of thing, and you could do Dude, that. I mean, I, I'm not gonna bother. This is, but. <laughs> like, I don't know any of this stuff. <laughs> if that wasn't abundantly clear already, but like, yeah, it's just so crazy to me. Like, we talk about the granularity of guitar stuff and how like yeah. <clears throat> it's it's all about like the sum of the parts, and it's about you know, <laughs> there's a million factors into between you playing the guitar and what you're hearing out of your amp. Yeah. And like, God forbid, you try to record that. Right? So there's all these other things, <laughs> yeah, that not yeah. just make it more difficult. It's not more difficult. That's not what I'm saying. But it's it's, I don't know. It's almost like not worth relying too heavily on one single control point mm-hmm. because it's just it's too it's all too variable. Yeah, does that make sense? That's I, yeah. I mean, tell me if I'm interpreting your 
your point here, right? But like, it, also on the other side of my mind, I find I'm thinking like, okay, so I just bought into this UAD thing. Yeah. What happens if I don't like Luna a year from now? You oh, know? Yeah. And well, for one thing, um, everything except for the analog summing is not unique to Luna. They all are just plugins that I now own and I can, okay. lop, I can load them into Pro Tools or Reaper or anything. Um, so the channel strip, the bus compressor, the preamp, all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would just drag them into the right spot to kind of yeah. sort of emulate this situation, right? In another DAW. Um, I feel like I don't, so uh, yeah. that's why I think it's okay. I think it's okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think it's okay too. You know? uh, I need like a, a visual workflow of like how audio is processed in a DAW with all this kind of thing. Right. Like a flow, I need a flow chart sometimes. Um I, I doubt wonder, they have one because they're selling to people like you who already understand this. But well, it's not just to me. I wonder if I can just let me. Uh, I'm I'm gonna if this doesn't come up right away. Um, I wonder if I if if I if I show the. <laughs> for God's sake, really? <laughs> I'm trying. Derek can see my screen, but I haven't oh, yeah. showed it on the thing yet. Oh my god! Just search so, API. Why didn't I? Um, because the yeah exactly. API. Okay. Um, the Luna Vision Console Emulation Bundle. Okay, so this is the thing, and I'm going to put it on the screen now. Um, let's see if they have better graphics specifically for this. Um, so like there's all the components of the of the channel strip like as they'll appear in okay in across like so when you have this like I can just make this be my channel interface in the DAW. It's just there with the kind of controls the preamp, um, dynamic section, two different EQs and then a bus compressor. You can mm-hmm. use any of those or bypass them. Um, it ends up looking like this. Basically, okay. so it fills out a certain section of the DAW, and then um, right underneath that is where all my other plugins would go. And you can see there's this it's sort of blurry on the screen, but there's a little API vision icon, and that's oh, how I would drag okay. it around to place it in the order. Oh, so if I wanted okay. it between two plugins, I could make all this shit go between them. And like, and is that ev- just like top down in in Signal Flow? Otherwise, yeah, it's 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 basically top okay. down. So. Um, up above this, and and like we'll go down. Um, so here's sort of another view. Um, yeah. So this is how Luna looks. Whenever you click on a channel, whatever you're working on appears on the left side, sort of zoomed in. Okay. So you have this sort of like blown up um, view to make it easy. Um, so from the top down, like way up at the input is where the summing goes, and then it goes through. There's a slot for tape emulation. I don't have any of UAD's tape emulation. I rarely use tape emulation, but I use I use some on the master bus, but um, on individual channels, I usually don't. And then um, every one of these channels, so this vertically might be a guitar or a, or a snare drum or whatever, mm-hmm. and just clicking through so it can show the preamp, the dynamic section, or the EQ oh, at a gotcha. time. Oh, gotcha. Okay, yeah. They're all on every channel, but it's a matter it's of like displaying. visualizing yeah. which one it is um, or the bus compressor. And then beneath that, like we saw kind of up here, is where any other plugins I would want go, and then mm-hmm. I can just place it if I wanted the console to go between some other plugins, I could. Like you would, like if you yeah, had pitch it. correction, Melodyne or Autotune or something, you would put that above, right? Yeah. Above the console. If you had drum triggers, you'd put that above um, okay. and so on. Nice. Um, and the whole thing, and yeah, beyond Luna, like you're, you're, when you buy this particular thing that I bought, you're buying um, the plugins that can be used everywhere also. Cool. Um, but the integration, wow. I think, because if just these plugins, like, I don't know, I have I have plugins that can do this. Mm-hmm. And it's not like, I mean, these sound great, but it's not like I can't make things sound great otherwise. But it's that workflow of like, every time I instantiate a new track, make a new track, okay, here it is, and it's got your channel strip on it already. So, yeah. oh, this needs a little more top. I, I do it. and And because of that hardware integration, like I said, I push record enable on that track, I've dropped right back in. You know what I mean? And the other thing is like this you, you you're saying things like you don't need it to make good music and stuff and that's true, but like and you don't you didn't need it until 
you don't need it until you don't have it, right? So it's that thing where <laughs> you're you're going to start yeah. using this, and it's going to just very effortlessly flow into your process and flow in, and like yeah. become a part of your workflow. And then someday you're going to open up Pro Tools, and that's not going to be there, or or right. something else, right? You're going to have to do some other work, right. and it's going to be like, oh fuck, <laughs> like, it's going to be like the, I have to actually click. And then type to filter the yeah. list, and then click the one I want. Okay, now it's called up the API channel strip. That's what me. I mean. Like it's now it's I'm back not where gonna I make started. It, it's not <laughs> the power of these things. Don't make them. Don't doesn't make itself uh, like present until you don't have the ability to use it. Yeah. So it's like yeah, you just slowly start integrating it into your workflow, and you right. maybe rely on it in certain ways and stuff. And then suddenly, when it's not there, it's like oh my god, mm-hmm. like it. Yeah. it it really shines a light on what a killer setup yeah. it is, right? So, right. yeah. So, <sighs> anyway. I, I, yeah, I, I know I said it before, and I sound like a salesperson or whatever, but it's it's free. Um, if you have UAD hardware, you should definitely check out Luna. Um, if you don't, it's free, so it doesn't so, hurt anything. Um, and this is just to sort of tie this all up with a nice bow. Earlier yeah. today in Discord, you had mentioned if people you want to know if people find yeah. this part of the show interesting or helpful. Um, yeah. So chime in about that, right? Because I, I, a large part of what I was just talking about is not really guitar focused, <laughs> so I but, often steer my steer my brain a little away when I'm on this show, and I just wondered like, but and so everybody in today in the five minutes I was looking at my phone was like, oh no, that sounds that sounds cool, even if they don't totally understand every bit of yeah. it. Yeah. So. so like an early mission statement for this show was that we had these different backgrounds and could offer these different sure. angles on things. So like I'm always on board for it. I just often can't contribute very much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. but yeah, let us know. Cool. Um, I do think, you know, for what it's worth, I, I think the guitar, the guitar based workflow works. It works well for that too. And especially, it it is you know hardware locked in that sense, but if you have yeah. like an, an Apollo or an Aero, one of the little USB powered ones that have DSP in them, um, you're into it. I mean this that that'll do everything, yeah. and you know. So um, anyway, so, that's so enough. Get it. So 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 get it. Check it out. It's free. it's free. And if you don't have an interface and might want just a simple two channel. And you're looking at something in the sector of like a focus rate scarlet, which is sort of the king right now, and is a very good interface. Yeah, Um, the UAD's uh, version of the UA's version of that because it's not UAD; it's Universal Audio's Volt interfaces are just standard interfaces. And right now they're giving one away with a one-year subscription to their plug-in pack. So um, that's a hell of a deal. It is, it's it's not like you're buying the interface for a lot less than it would normally cost, mm-hmm. um, but you're getting this other thing, to, and if you like it, you can keep subscribing to it, um, but you don't have to. So, I, for what it's worth, uh, I use a Focusrite Scarlet Solo yeah. and to do everything, to do this show. When you hear a guitar that's going through that on the show, yeah. all of the music things that I do on the side is through that little tiny... Box, so yep. you don't need much to really like start doing this stuff. Um, but yeah, if you can kind of get in with the software and the hardware for low risk, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. why not? Yeah, exactly. I think um, if I push the back arrow a few times, I think that deal that you'd be buying. Um, I wonder if I can Google that quickly. Nudie Spark free. Volt. <laughs> Volt plus UAD plugins promo. Putting this on Here the we thing. Go. I think I found it. Oh no, it's ending. <laughs> oh no. Uh, uh, oh well. well, if you decided to buy the Volt. Oh, this was extended. This was over a long time ago. <laughs> really? It ended in, didn't it just say it ended in April? Scroll down. Extended through April thirtieth. Oh no! Oh, that's, that's else. another. That's another. Um, that's something else. Yeah. Okay. Wait. So is this an old pro? Full plus UAD plugins promotion. Hold on. I think I may have so, found the um, wrong thing. Sweetwater's doing a deal too, as well, um, uh, for holiday things, on Volt stuff. Okay, so a full year of Spark, which is 
all of you, all of the plugins that UID have made native versions of, non-hardware based versions of, um, costs one hundred and fifty dollars for the year, mm -hmm. and they will give you for free this. The and Vault Two. And I think this is still running. I think this is going through the thirty first because this is the the current end gadget. This is written on yeah. December second. I think I just found the wrong page before. So this is the Volt Two. It is a two channel interface. Um, it has yeah, it's, it's like two a, instrument inputs or two mic inputs. It's inherently a little better than the one I have because it has the combo jacks, and I have one XLR and one line on mine. Right. Um, so yeah. So this is two full inter and, and it's you know it's the UAD blah Universal Audio's blah blah blah. Their circuit is so mm -hmm. great or something. I I wouldn't expect them to be hugely higher quality than than something like a Scarlet, which are perf they're all perfectly fine interfaces in this price range. But um, they're also marketing this that it can go mobile. It's like you can plug it into an iPad and stuff. And now with Logic on I yeah. iOS, iPad OS, mm -hmm. you can do that. Um, that's a thing I have not I, considered. I, they're basically <laughs> interfaces in this kind of zone right now. These like two channels that are a hundred or hundred fifty bucks, four channels that are up to maybe three hundred. They are basically feature parity. Yeah, they it's they have inputs. they have the direct monitoring. Um, it's all done the same way with a little mix knob. Um, they have two inputs. Uh, some of them have, um. Like I think this does does Focusrite still have MIDI on the back of theirs? I'm not sure. Um, not on this one. Um, the the UAD one, the Universal Audio ones, the preamps have a vintage mode. It does something different with like a transformer couple that's in them. Um, on the other hand, the Scarlet has its air mode. Yeah. Um, the new version four of that uh, Scarlet um, upgraded something about it, blah, blah, blah. Oh, you know what? The upgraded Scarlet has an auto gain. So basically mm. you push a button and it'll listen to you play for 10 seconds and then set your gain. And it has like I an like always running kind of clip safe thing that'll adjust your gain on the fly if you clip. Um, That's cool. So Scarlet has those great features too. Um, I can, anyway. can I, will it destroy anything if I turn on my air button right now? Not at all. It It, it gives it a slight very high lift. It's well, supposed to go. make it sound more like Focusrite's old preamps from the 80s when they became famous. Oh, all right. Well, here I am. Do I sound like I'm from the 80s now? Because <laughs> I just turned it off and now it's back on. <laughs> uh, very interesting to know. I'm sure I can't hear it over Discord. I'm yeah, going to listen to that I can't when even I mix hear this. it in my room here. Probably um, can. But here's anyway. what I think. I think the air mode does a high frequency lift that is probably beyond the uh, range of your microphone because <laughs> we're using <laughs> we're using these these large dynamic microphones which tend to not really hear anything over 15 kilohertz anyway. <laughs> So mm -hmm. we were probably not, there's no sound that could be affected by the air knob with that particular <laughs> microphone. <laughs> the interface is like, yeah, great, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, fucking do it, buddy. <laughs> Good luck. Oh my yeah. God. All right, let's, All right, uh, let's wrap oh, this boy, shit up. Oh boy, that took a long time. Yes, so um, I believe, so thing of the okay. week is, thing of the week is happening. I'm going to play some sound. Nary an episode goes by that I don't play the bit commander sound. Here it is. My thing of the week is a board game. Yeah. He said to the surprise of no one. It's this game, Escape the Dark Castle. That, but that's okay. Yeah. You can show it on your camera. I see it here. I got both. Don't worry. <laughs> Escape <laughs> the Dark Castle is a uh, pretty light tabletop RPG for one to five. It looks light the way you were waving it around like that. It's because <laughs> it's just a little. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and it's it's a really fun. It's a really hard game. It's a co op game. Oh, okay. Um, and you are uh, the the plot, if you care, is that you are just a prisoner in a dark castle, and you're trying to escape. And I love it. It's your your the dark castle is this deck of giant cards, and you are trying to get through the dark castle. And in every game, there's like a big stack of cards here. And 15 of them make up the castle at any given time. And so you shuffle them up. And so every time you play, yeah. you get a different castle to right, play through. Right, right. It's a procedurally generated board game. Pretty much. Yeah. And it's it's really difficult. Uh, it's kind of like Dark Souls E difficult that you, uh -huh. you die. And um, there's a lot of like, it's co uh, co op as well. So you get to decide, like, as a group, what you're doing. It comes with all these like special dice that are very rad. 
um, nice. for different like things, and your characters have their own dice that like have different abilities and stuff on them depending on the um, on like the stat roll of the character you're playing, mm-hmm. which is all fixed. Like you don't have to make a character here. Um, yeah. Like the Smith has like. It's got this awesome artwork style too. It's kind of like Metalocalypse a little bit. Uh huh. I Do you see, see that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the 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 what would you call that gritty unrealism? <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like uh, woodblock print sort of, but like uh-huh. so this guy's got like f- four strength, t- uh, three wisdom, and one vision or whatever it is. Like, yeah. And so you're trying to build amongst your players like a balanced team of all these like characters. Yeah. Um, because you have to roll certain and like your die matches what their stat roll is and stuff like mm-hmm. that. So you're trying to effectively uh, go against the enemies and stuff. And so yeah. one of the cool things about it is like not every enemy or not every encounter is a fight. Some of them are just like this happened to you. Um, yeah, yeah, and depending on there's also this mechanic about like who flips the card to the next chamber of the castle, and whatever it says may happen to only that player. So mm-hmm. it's not just like you're you can rotate around, you can negotiate who pulls the card next because there's a risk if it says like you take two damage instead of like the party yeah. takes two damage. Like that means you personally. <laughs> That means and your friend's going to punch you in the arm. <laughs> yeah. For like whatever the encounter is, you know? Yeah. Um, a haggard old woman appears out of nowhere and offers to read your fortune. Something in her eye speaks of a greater power. You feel it is wise to comply. <laughs> uh, and then it's like, it gives you like success and failure conditions based on your action and things like that. Roll, so, yeah. Yeah, it's um, it's easy to learn. It's really dark and like kind of uh, the the descriptive language is very visual and very mm-hmm. like gruesome and grotesque and stuff. And it's it's quickly becoming a really uh, it's a favorite in our house already. We've played awesome. it a bunch of times cool. since we picked it up at PAX, and it's it's fast because you die a lot. <laughs> yeah, it says it, well, it says uh, play time twenty to forty minutes. Now, yeah, I've um. I've seen, you know, playtime written on the box of many of my board games. They're I always take, wrong. Yeah. I take twice as long to play board games as whoever makes board games. Yeah, yeah maybe it <laughs> takes that long when you've been playing it every single day for a year and like right. you know what to you know every mechanic. I have but games yeah. like like Terraforming Mars where it's like uh, the box <sighs> probably says like 30 to 60 minutes and I'm like, "Bitch, this is like a 10-minute setup." Yeah. And if I'm yeah. in a hurry, <laughs> like, what are you talking yeah. about? It's like a two-hour game all day. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so- um, <laughs> this one is, like, we have not beat it. We, we just keep eating shit, basically. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's going to be really exciting when you do then. Yeah, and it, yeah. It, it, because it's just the two of us, so it, it's really about, like, building an effective pair of players, yeah. right, with yeah. the characters in the game. Um, and like, you know, if it's too hard and we just never win, like, well, I can start us with more health then and we'll get a little further, hopefully. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so it's just, it's really well done. There's also a version, um, like this is very like medieval and stuff. And there's a version yeah. that takes place in space on a, uh, like an abandoned space station thing that was like attacked. And it's the same kind of idea, except all the enemies and all the encounters are very different. So escape cool. the dark castle. It's really fun. Do it. Escape that dark castle. Escape it. Yeah. Escape. Escape. So my my thing of the week, I don't know. Um probably the <laughs> probably the VH4. Um <laughs> Is that available outside of UAD stuff? I don't know. It's, I've, I've, I've talked enough. I feel like I've, I've talked more than my share in this episode. So I think it's a kick-ass amp. Um, and it is. the software is version truly, is very good. Like, that's one of the amps. Yeah. Um, I should say, because the version I have only works on UAD hardware, but um, Diesel with a Z. Mm-hmm. Uh, VH4... Um, Plugin Alliance. So they STL they do sell the, one. the Brainworks one. Um, I'm looking for. Yeah. So okay, I don't know why it's not coming up for me, but 
assuming the plugin, oh, I should just put plugin after my search, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, so Plugin Alliance does sell it, which means it's definitely available as this is a native native uh, version. There's, there's, there he is. Fucking Ola. <laughs> Ola, making I his faces. Um, so there you go, yeah. So this is, even though I have the UAD version, um, there's a there's a um, native version there for you. You can run without UAD hardware. Although this one doesn't happen to be on sale for forty four dollars, but yeah, well, fuck you. <laughs> it's worth one hundred and fifty bucks for what for what it's worth. Yeah, um, fair. I think it's a fucking kick ass. It comes with a lot of great uh, impulse responses, as we oh good talked about on the last episode. It has oh, an you impulse know? loader. <laughs> oh, and all these Brainworks plugins, by the way, that impulse loader you can just turn off. Justin, yes. You know what we didn't do. What? Set up the giveaway. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, like whatever. You said, we'll figure stall. it out. <laughs> um, let's, we'll just remind about the giveaway then. Um, yeah. As keep we talked about out, in the last episode, I have episode. not sent a newsletter either. So keep an eye out for a newsletter with more info on this. If you're yeah. not on the newsletter, go ahead and sign up. It's in the show notes. We do not send a lot. I, I'm, yeah. I think we've sent four emails total, and right. like one of them in was like a year. telling you who the winner was <laughs> for the last time. So get on the newsletter. Um, We'll have like some instructions about it, but we're giving away an ML Sound Labs Mega Gent Pack, courtesy of Doug, Patreon supporter Doug, has donated this IR pack to the Tone Control for us to give away. So we're doing that. That's it. Absolutely. It's going to involve um, Discord. So get in Discord. Yeah, yeah. You'll have to join Discord and just click a thing. Yep. That's all. Discord, Discord's free, and no, um, um, it's no tweeting fun, required, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. No friend tagging, none of that. Um, nope. No following, no like and subscribe. But do that but if you want. We I guess. will definitely put that up, and so that means you're going to have four weeks um, to click that because um, this episode is coming out on um, the 25th, Christmas Day. Christmas Day, and then we are doing our normal end of the year thing where we take, give ourselves a week off and we just, I produce an episode that is just the bullshit that we cut off of the end of all the other episodes of the past it's my year. My favorite part of the year. <laughs> um, <laughs> Takes so me a week to listen to it. It's so long. That will come out uh, the, the t- two weeks after the 25th, and then we'll be back with another real episode, first real episode of the year in January after that. And that's when we'll pick the winner for this. So. Yeah, so hey, cheers to 2023, guys. Yeah. Or four? I, what, are, what are we cheersing to? I don't know. Whatever. Hey, Doesn't happy matter. new year. Happy new year. Uh, yeah. Well done. Merry Merry Christmas, as you hear my voice. Yeah. Well or done holidays, circling. You know, all the holidays. Merry holiday. Merry, um, merry happiness. Let's, uh, let's call go. It, let's call late. it out. It's late. Yep. Um, so then, yes, please please join the mailing list and join Discord so you can p- participate in that. And uh, if you want to support the show, you know how to do that too because it's patreon.com slash the tone control. That's the correct way, and I know you can do it. Um, and those patrons this week are... <laughs> Nick Green... Why are you already laughing? Nick Sorry. Greenwood, Carson Ricketts, Matthew Fenslaw, Risenwolf... Brian Gower of the Tone Jerks Podcast, Andrew Walsh of Andrew's Alcove, Sean Wright of Lollygagger FX, Doug Gann, he doesn't have a name. That's what it Look, says. Eric's name has been changed a lot. 90% of the time I feel like I'm responsible for it and I always forget until Justin's <laughs> like, and the patrons are. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> That's part of the game. The patrons yeah, are, what it. name can you come up with in these seconds? Yeah. <laughs> no anyway, name this hey. time. Thanks for a good year, folks. Yeah. We'll see you in, in 2024. See you see next you year. <laughs> see you next year. Hi. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>